Hey guys, welcome to another Carbathon video. This is an in-depth tour of the all-new 2022 Suzuki Ignis GLX Series 2. Let's get straight into it. Towards the front, you got full LED headlights, as you can see. You also got LED daytime red lights integrated into headlight as well. It's also quite nice. You can also see that it's also slightly blacked out inside the headlight there too, which is quite nice. And you got little bits of chrome surrounding the bulb itself as well. If I step back, you can actually see the front end has been redesigned for the Series 2. You actually have got a lot more chrome. You can see you've got chrome that goes all the way around the headlight and all the way around the grille as well. Also, you've got a little bit of chrome besides the Suzuki emblem as well. If I just step back a little bit more, you can see that even the lower portion of the bump has been redesigned. You can see you've got a little, you've got an addition of some nice grey towards um, a grey sort of finish towards the bottom portion of the bumper as well. It's quite nice. Mechanically in terms of the differences it's pretty much the same it's just more cosmetic changes they've done for the Series 2. The fuel consumption of this car is is 4.9 litres per 100 kilometres, urban 5.7, extra urban 4.4. In terms of engine displacement, it's still the dual jet 1.2 litre engine, so it's still, still pretty much exactly the same. Indicators on the sides, and I'll probably, I might just go on this side, probably a bit easier, show you the wheels, uh, pretty much the same as. The series one. So it's also nicely finished in this sort of dark grey finish. So you got disc brakes in the front. So you've got some nice plastic cladding around here. In terms of the tyres, they are Bridgestone Eco Pure EP150 tyres. In terms of the tyre size, they are a 16 inch tyre and they are made in Japan. Got keyless entry. See so you've got some grill. Sorry about the background noise as a person doing a sale with the car. Got roof racks as well. Show you the grill. So you can see the rear looks pretty much the same. Got LED brake lights as you can see here. Got a five-year warranty as well. See the bottom portion of the bumper has also been redesigned slightly. Got this addition of this grey style finish which is very similar to the front. Solid beam rear axle. And if I forgot to have a look here, and you also you can see you've got, um, appears to be I think this uh, drum brakes in the rear as well. Got rear backup camera there too. Nice. Third braking light. Boot space. So a space of spare tire over here, got some interior illumination over here as well. Seats do fold down, so you've got two seats. This is the um, Bin GLX, you got four seater, so this means you can actually slide the seats forward and back. Whereas in the base model GL, you cannot do that, so I'll just, just show you. You can put the seats down like that, little toggle there, yep. they come down. Um, still doesn't fold down flat, which is unfortunate, but um, you still can be able to fold it, which I think is alright. And um, yeah, so you can pretty much put your suitcases on top of there, and it's quite deep, so it's good. Not much lengthways, but there's, it's quite, I'd say it's quite deep for a car of its size, so I think that's pretty good on Suzuki's end. Nope, sorry. 
problem. Over here, I'll just quickly show you the key fobs. So, pretty standard looking key. This is the emblem. So it's texture sort of matte finish. Nice. Now for 2022, what is new is they've actually have added a nine inch touch screen there, which is actually a much bigger one than the previous one. So, I'll, which I'll go through in just a minute. So I'll show you. So interior looks pretty much the same. It's more, since I just mentioned that, I think it might be a good option to just sort of show you. So this is the old screen, as you can see. And just to compare and contrast, you can see that, um, yeah, that's actually a lot more bigger screen they've put on this one. And you can see the old look of the front end there. This is the Dulux. I personally like the one on the old one, but um, yeah, but the new one looks a bit more like a SUV saw style rugged sort of finish, so a little bit different. So this is the interior of the Ignis, the Series 2. Now this one being the top of the range, you got keyless start, so I'm just gonna press it twice and then you can see you're greeted with your gauges over here. Quite nice. So you can see the gauges have been slightly redesigned in there. They've got this little nice. I like this sort of um finish over here. You can see it's a little textured sort of finish there. Kind of reminds you of a like an old uh, a old Casio watch. Well, it's always pretty cool. So you can see that there, or like like a like a one of those like type of watches, which is pretty cool. So you can see you got your rev count towards the left, and towards the right you got your speedometer, and then you can see you've got a little trip mini trip computer which can display all your content information which I thought was pretty good. your average speed, driving time and fuel con how much you're consuming, your range and st stuff like that you can see you can also have little additional buttons here trip and stuff like that pretty cool and you can see there's a little light on the top there which I thought was pretty nice as well um yeah pretty nice pretty standard stuff so in terms of the steering wheel it's pretty standard as you can see Pretty standard style string wheel, I'll just turn this off for a minute. Pretty standard style, let us wrap the string wheel. You can see you've got this little nice little black stitching over here. Um, you can see you've got this nice little silver finish over here. All your hands free telephone buttons over here. Quite nice, even all the buttons here feel pretty free, premium to the touch over here. And you've got your wipe controls to the left and your headlight indicator controls to the right. So then they feel quite solid. You can see it's all hot plastics here and here. A little bit of, I wouldn't really call it storage, and all pretty nice. You can see you've got some storage there too. And um, yeah, so you can see all the switches also feel pretty good, all hard plastics here as well. Pretty neat. You can see storage is actually pretty alright here. You can easily fit. This one you can, a little bit of squeeze, but you can fit two drink bottles there, which is quite nice. So over here we'll just try out the head unit. So this is the new one. Um, the colors still look a little bit washed out still, but um, in terms of the previous one, it is a lot better. And being a lot larger, you got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can easily um connect your phone and display your contacts from Spotify. Whoops, and all that. Another thing I noticed is the head unit slightly changed too. Before they had this little design where had these little squares which are all over the place and this actually is nice and big which is actually i think good for like elderly people in particular so they can actually see what they're pressing so the response of the screen is not bad i'll be honest it's it's could be better you can see if we do a radio test pretty clear you got um excess uh, tweeters in the corners of the doors details it's supposed to clear and stuff like that, so it's um, it's not too bad at all. But um, I don't really have any real any real tune, tunes and stuff like that. Um, there's no navigation on this; it doesn't look like it. But you can connect your phone. You can um, you can Bluetooth, and I think iLink is when you connect your phone for all the um, Apple CarPlay and stuff like that. And um, yeah. Pretty alright, and it looks like you got all this additional sort of stuff, sound settings, um, sound settings, and all that sort of stuff. Pretty cool stuff. So over here, you've got your climb control. It appears to be a single zone. Um, one thing at a glance, it looks like this has less reflection here, which is nice because before there was a sort of um, reflection that was coming from the inside of the LCD, and the sort of finish 
um, the transparent material on the outside, and doesn't lose, doesn't really show too much on shows too much on the camera, but it can, you made it a little difficult to see what you're doing. So, so in terms of the temperature, the lowest looks like it appears to be 18 degrees centigrade. I'll tell you the Fahrenheit details in the motion graphics, and the highest I think is 32. Yeah, 32 is the highest it goes. You can see the fan speeds all pretty nice here. All the buns feel pretty screwed together and everything. Can't really complain about that. And then you've got all your different zones, which here you can just press and then you can easily do all these different ones. And let's turn off. So, yeah. Yeah, pretty quite solid. Single C B C V T and little vinyl shift boost. And you can see you've got this little nice I think this is optional, you can actually get different colours for the um accents here, which is also on the doors as well. They're hard to see. So I thought I'll just put this white so you can see little bits of blue and stuff like that. Standard handbrake as well, and you've got a single cup holder there. You can also see you've got your seats here. It's pretty neat and you can see you've got this sort of blue sort of material and the seat feels a little bit more supported than the previous one but it's still relatively flat there isn't too much lumbar support but comfort wise it's pretty much feels a bit more comfy a bit more plush which i thought was nice got a vending mirror here got interior illumination here and then you can see you've got another vending mirror here as well Oh, pretty good. Put this one just in the center here, and we'll go and check out the receipts. I like how the doors actually open really wide, just makes it a lot more easy to get in. I feel some cars don't really do that too well. I did mention that, oh, come on, that being the, the GLX, you can actually slide the seats forward. That means when you actually try and open the toll gate, you can see that you've actually gained a little bit more extra room, which is actually quite nice. Now, the problem is being a four-seater means less people can be in the car, which is kind of a bit of a drawback which is unfortunate I hate when your locks always in between like that there you go so seats very similar to the to the front so you got a single cup holder which doesn't look like it can fit I'll just open the door makes it a bit easier doesn't look like it can fit that little Bolt there, but pretty standard switches, all hard plastics there as well. Pretty standard, and you got a little map pocket here, and all that. In terms of visibility, you can see that you've got pretty large visibility on the side. You've got a bit of a blind spot over here, which is a little bit unfortunate because it may be a little bit hard when you're pulling out junctions, but um, overall, pretty all right and quite airy for a car this size. The, obviously, being a four seater, you don't gain an armrest because normal armrest because there's no extra seat there. I'll just show you the close this door. Let's show you the interior from the rear seat. Pretty cool, you got a little 
has a little kind of like a little prop that you pull to open the door. So as you can see the engine is pretty much the same as the previous one. Yeah, sorry about that. So 1.2 litre dual jet engine. It's a really tiny engine, you can see you've got your battery and all that. So these are built in Japan, and um, I think if you live in India, they actually, they, they're built in India because they go under the Marty Suzuki division, so a different sort of thing altogether. So that's one little walk around of the 2022 Suzuki Ignis. I'll leave details in the description below of the dealership stuff there. And um, feel free to like subscribe. Thanks for watching.